when you have non repeated linear factors in the denominator you have to write them into three simple fractions separately so if you have a repeated linear factor you should write it in the form of a by x minus 2 because it's a single non repeated linear factor polynomial here is 2 and here it is x into x when you multiply the degree is 3 so therefore it is clearly a proper rational function hello everyone a warm welcome to one and all this is yashruti ma'am lecturing in vidyashram the temple of excellence mysore so we are at the revision sessions of e chapter question and answer so in this session we are looking at partial fractions so in partial fraction you will be having one five marks question from this chapter so that is resolving the given rational function into partial fractions so let us see the distribution of marks in this chapter so you will be having part d type question that is one five mark question so total marks from this chapter is five so let's see the questions now resolve into partial fraction so the first question is x square by x plus 1 x plus 2 x plus 3 so we have here non repeated linear factors when you have non repeated linear factors in the denominator you have to write them into three simple fractions separately and the very first thing you should note that the degree of the denominator should be always less than the degree of the numerator then it must be called as a proper fraction otherwise it is said to be an improper fraction then improper fraction must be converted to proper and then we have to resolve so here this is clearly a proper fraction we can resolve it so therefore here x square by x plus 1 x plus 2 x plus 3 can be written as a by x plus 1 plus b by x plus 2 plus c by x plus 3 so by multiplying the denominator both sides we will get equation x square is equal to a into x plus 2 x plus 3 b into x plus 1 x plus 3 c into x plus 1 x plus 2 take this as equation 1 since we have three linear factors here we can equate them to zero to find the value of x so for first one we have x plus 1 so put x is equal to minus 1 put x is equal to minus 1 in equation 1 then what happens minus 1 whole square is 1 is equal to so if you put minus 1 in the factor containing x plus 1 it will become zero because we are taking x plus 1 is equal to zero so therefore the term b and c become zero we will get only a term minus 1 plus 2 is 1 minus 1 plus 3 is 2 so this implies a is equal to 1 by 2 next put x is equal to minus 2 in equation 1 If you put x is equal to minus two, a becomes zero, c becomes zero. So therefore, we have minus two whole square as four. So four is equal to b into minus one into one. This becomes b is equal to minus four. Next, we will put x is equal to minus three in equation one. So if you put x is equal to minus three, a b becomes zero. We will get the value for c so minus 3 whole square is 9 so 9 and we have here minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 next we have minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1 so we have c is equal to 9 by 2 now substitute the value of a b c in the equation so let me take this as equation star so let us substitute this in equation star so from equation star we can write x square by x plus 1 x plus 2 x plus 3 as three simple partial fraction that is a that is 1 by 2 into x plus 1 minus 4 divided by x plus 2 plus 9 by 2 into x plus 3 so thus we have resolved the partial fraction Let us see the next question. Three x plus two divided by x minus two x plus three whole square. So here, three x plus two divided by x minus two x plus three whole square. So here, three x plus two divided by x minus two x plus three whole square. So here, three x plus two divided by x minus two x plus three whole square. So here, three x plus two divided by x minus two
3 x plus 2 divided by x minus 2 means here x plus 3 can be written as x plus 3 into x plus 3. That means we have a repeated linear factors here. So when you have a repeated linear factor, you have to write this in the form of a by x minus 2 plus b by x plus 3 whole square plus c by x plus 3. So if you have a repeated linear factor, you should write it in the form of a by x minus 2 because it's a single non-repeated linear factor. Here we have a repeated linear factor. That should be the sum of two partial fractions again. Now, let me take this as equation 1. This becomes 3x plus 2 is equal to, so multiplying x minus 2, x plus 3 whole square on both sides, we will get a into x plus 3 whole square plus b into x minus 2 plus c into x minus 2 x plus 3. Let me take this as equation 2. Now we have only two factors. So therefore let us equate them to 0. If you put x minus 2 is equal to 0 then it becomes x is equal to 2. So put x is equal to 2 in equation 2. If you put x is equal to 2 in equation 2 here it is 3 2 is a 6 plus 2. 8. a into 2 plus 3 whole square becomes 25a. Here becomes 0, here it becomes 0. So this implies a is equal to a divided by 25. Now let's take x plus 3 is equal to 0. Then it becomes put x is equal to minus 3 in equation 2. If you put x is equal to minus 3, minus 9 plus 2 becomes minus 7 is equal to a term becomes 0, C terms become 0. So we have B is minus 5 because minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. So this implies B is equal to 7 by 5. Now we don't have any other term to equate it to 0. So we can take X is equal to 0 or we can follow the method of comparing the coefficients on both sides. So we have the coefficients of X square, the coefficients of X as well as the coefficients of constant on both sides. So here let me equate coefficient of x square on both sides. So on the left hand side you do not contain any term containing x square. So therefore it is equal to 0. If you expand x plus 3 whole square you have x square term and when you multiply with a the coefficient of x square is a. And for the second term you do not have any x square term. But for the third term you have x into x as x square c into x square it is c x square. So therefore the coefficient of x square is c. So from this clearly we can see c is equal to minus a. So therefore what is the value of c now? It is minus 8 by 25. Or you can use the concept of putting x is equal to 0. If you put x is equal to 0 you will get the equation in the form of a plus b plus c substitute a, substitute b, solve the fraction and find the value of c, you will get the same answer minus 8 by 25. Now we have the value of a, b, c, let us substitute in equation 1. So from 1, now we have here 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 2, x plus 3 whole square is equal to 8 divided by 25 into x minus 2 plus 7 by 5 x plus 3 whole square minus 8 by 25 x plus 3. Hence we have resolved the given rational function into two simple fractions. Next the same format here we have 3 x plus y x plus 2 x minus 1 whole square. So we can directly write it as 3 x plus 5 divided by x plus 2 x minus 1 whole square is equal to a by x plus 2 plus b by x minus 1 whole square plus c by x minus 1. So take this as equation 1. Now here it becomes 3x plus 5 is equal to a into x minus 1 whole square b into x plus 2 plus c into x plus 2 x minus 1. 
take this as equation 2. We have two factors. So, put x is equal to minus 2. If you put x is equal to minus 2 in equation 2, we have minus 6 plus 5 minus 1 is equal to minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 whole square 9a. So, this implies a is equal to minus 1 by 9. Next, put x is equal to 1 in equation 2. So, then it is 3 1s are 3 plus 5. 8 is equal to this becomes 0, this becomes 0. We have 1 plus 2, 3b. So, this implies b is equal to 8 by 3. Next, the same concept equating coefficient of x square on both sides. So, equating coefficient of x square on both sides. So, on the left hand side we do not have any x square term. So, therefore it is 0. On right hand side we have x square term containing the coefficients a and c. So, therefore we get a plus c. So, this implies c is equal to minus a. So, therefore c is equal to 1 divided by 9. a is minus 1 by 9. So, therefore c becomes 1 by 9. So, therefore now we can write 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 2 x minus 1 whole square as minus 1 by 9 into x plus 2 plus 8 by 3 x minus 1 whole square plus 1 by 9 into x minus 1. Hence we have resolved the given rational function into simple fractions. So, next we have here 2x square minus 4x plus 1 and denominator is x minus 2 x minus 3 whole square. Clearly you can see here, here the degree of the polynomial here is 2 and here it is x into x when you multiply the degree is 3. So, therefore it is clearly a proper rational function. So, we can resolve. So, this becomes now 2x square minus 4x plus 1 divided by x minus 2 x minus 3 whole square is equal to a divided by x minus 2 plus b by x minus 3 whole square plus c divided by x minus 3. We will get it as 2x square minus 4x plus 1 is equal to a into x minus 3 whole square plus b into x minus 2 plus c into x minus 2 x minus 3. So, let me take this as equation 1, let me take this as equation 2. Now, put x is equal to 2 in equation 2. So, here it is 2 square 4 to the 8 minus 4 to the 8 plus 1 is equal to a into 2 minus 3 is minus 1, minus 1 whole square is 1. So, we have a. So, here it becomes 0. So, this implies the value of a is equal to 1. Next we have put x is equal to 3 in 2. If you put x is equal to 3, 3 square is 9, 9 to the 18, 4 3 is 12 plus 1 is equal to a terms becomes 0. So, 3 minus 2 is b and c terms becomes 0. So, this implies 18 minus 12 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. So, therefore b is equal to 7. Next, the same concept we can use coefficient of x square on both sides. That is equate. Equate coefficient of x square on both sides. Now, clearly you can see on the left hand side you have the coefficient of x square as 2. So, it is 2. Again, on right hand side you have a and c. So, therefore it is a plus c. So, you can write c is equal to 2 minus a. Value of a is 1. So, 2 minus 1. So, therefore c is equal to 1. So, therefore now 2x square minus 4x plus 1 divided by x minus 2. x minus 3 whole square can be written as 1 divided by x minus 2 plus 7 divided by x minus 3 whole square plus 1 divided by x minus 3. Next question which was asked in March 2019. Here we have x minus 1, x 
x plus 2, x plus 4. So simple expansion, x minus 1 by x into x plus 2, x plus 4 can be written as a by x plus b by x plus 2 plus c by x plus 4. Take this as equation 1. So then equation becomes a into x plus 2, x plus 4 plus b into x into x plus 4 plus c into x into x plus 2. Take this as equation 2. Now we don't have any factor. Directly put x is equal to 0. Put x is equal to 0 in equation 2. Then it becomes minus 1. A into 0 plus 2 is 2. 0 plus 4 is 4. If you put x is equal to 0, b and c terms becomes 0. So this implies a is equal to minus 1 by 8. Next, put we have two more factors x plus 2, x plus 4. So put x is equal to minus 2 into. Then it becomes minus 3. A becomes 0 and C becomes 0. So B into minus 2 plus 2. So this implies B is equal to 3 divided by 4. Next put x is equal to minus 4 into. So if you put minus 4 here, the equation becomes minus 5 is equal to A becomes 0, B becomes 0. C is minus 4 into 2. So we have C is equal to 5 divided by 8. So therefore, x minus 1 divided by x into x plus 2, x plus 4 can be written as A by x. So that is minus 1 by 8x, b by x plus 2, that is 3 by 4 into x plus 2 and c by x plus 4, that is 5 by 8 into x plus 4. So this is how we are going to resolve any rational function into sum of partial fractions. Hence you will get one partial fraction question in your examination for 5 marks. We'll meet you in the next session with the new chapter. Until then, keep watching, keep learning, keep exploring. Thank you.